In this video, we're going to be talking about endometriosis treatment. Are you someone who's suffering from endometriosis? Are you tired of the pain and discomfort it brings to your life, the impact on your physical and mental well-being? Finding an effective treatment can be like an endless struggle. Look no further. In this video, we will discuss the various modalities of treatment available for endometriosis. Join the many others who have found relief and start your journey towards a pain-free future. Welcome to Shalom Health, a channel where we aim to empower you to lead a better and healthier life. I will start by defining what endometriosis is, how it causes pain, and then what to do if you think you already have symptoms and you have not been diagnosed or treated. And then I will discuss the various treatment options and their pros and cons. Towards the end of the video, I will talk about what the scientific guidelines on endometriosis are recommending. If you find value in the video, please like or share to help spread the word or subscribe to get notifications of future videos. Definition of endometriosis. Endometriosis is defined as a condition where tissue similar to the lining of the uterus grows outside the uterus. For example, on the ovaries, fallopian tubes, etc. How does endometriosis cause pain? The way it causes pain is mediated by hormones. During a normal menstrual cycle, the endometrium, that is the layer of tissue lining the womb, responds to hormonal changes. In the first half of the menstrual cycle, the maturing follicles set off a surge in estrogen that thickens the endometrium. After ovulation, if no pregnancy takes place, the endometrium is shed, and it is the shedding of the endometrium that causes bleeding, which is known as menstruation. The endometrial-like tissue outside the uterus, e.g. on the ovaries, fallopian tubes, etc., bleeds just as the endometrium lining the womb does. The bleeding in these other locations can cause scarring, inflammation, and pain as they cannot otherwise get out through the uterine service. Once you think you may have endometriosis, you should go and see your doctor. If you're not sure what the symptoms of endometriosis are, we have a video on this channel that talks about the symptoms of endometriosis. So you may wish to look at that, please. Test to diagnose endometriosis. The doctor will take a full history and examine the abdomen. You will then be sent for ultrasound test if there is clinical suspicion of endometriosis. Transvaginal ultrasound is preferred as it can check the ovaries to look for endometriotic cysts on the ovaries or endometriotic deposits in other areas. If the ultrasound comes back normal, it doesn't mean that you do not have endometriosis. Sometimes when the endometriosis lesions are small, they may not necessarily show an ultrasound, in which case further tests will be needed, such as laparoscopy. If you have persistent symptoms or recurrent symptoms, your doctor will consider making a referral to the gynecologist. The only way to get a definite diagnosis is by laparoscopy. This involves general anesthesia, and small incisions are made in the abdominal walls, and a telescope is then inserted to look into the pelvic area for signs of endometriotic deposits. Biopsies may be taken to confirm. Treatment options for endometriosis. The main aims of treatment are to reduce pain and to increase the quality of life of people with endometriosis. The treatment options for endometriosis vary depending on the woman's circumstances. If symptoms like pain and cramping are the main symptoms, many different symptom-relieving treatments can be considered. These include analgesics, surgery, or hormones. Hormone treatment isn't suitable for women who would like to try for a family. None of the available treatments can guarantee that the symptoms will go away completely, but it's often possible to find a treatment that relieves the symptoms enough for you to have a good quality of life. Treatment options for endometriosis. Endometriosis can be treated with drugs or with surgery, as we mentioned. Sometimes a combination of the two methods can be used. Some people may choose not to treat endometriosis, or they may decide to use alternative complementary therapies. Choosing not to treat endometriosis. The condition does not always need to be treated. Treatment is only indicated to treat symptoms when your quality of life has been affected. The symptom may improve 
if not treated. But for most people, it will stay the same. Worse for some, the symptoms will get worse if not treated. Advantages of choosing no treatment. Side effects of medications are avoided. No risk from surgery and symptoms may settle spontaneously. Disadvantages of choosing no treatment. Most of the symptoms will continue while some may get worse. Factors to consider when deciding whether you get, want to get treated or not. Effect on the quality of life, your age, your fertility status, the severity of symptoms and the stage of endometriosis. The type of treatment you have should be decided in conjunction with your doctor. Treatments for pain. Pain relieving medications, for example, paracetamol can be used. Some women experience symptom relief with over-the-counter medications such as paracetamol and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen and naproxen. Advantages of simple painkillers like paracetamol are that they are easy to obtain. The side effects are not very common with paracetamol. The disadvantage is that they may not be strong enough for the pain. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are another kind of medications that can be got over the counter. They work effectively if taken a few days before a period is expected. That is, if it is started about a day or two before the onset of your menstruation. Disadvantages of anti-inflammatory drugs are nausea, can be a side effect, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and stomach ulcers. We also have codeine-based painkillers. This can be used effectively, but they may have side effects like constipation and abdominal discomfort. There are pain-modifying treatments like tricyclic antidepressants, such as amitriptyline, which have effects on the central nervous system and on the way the body copes with pain. The side effects include constipation, dizziness, and nausea. In more severe cases of endometriotic pain, you may need referral to a specialist pain clinic. Hormonal treatments. Um, endometriosis tissue grow when exposed to estrogen, which is one of the hormones produced by women. The hormone treatments work by blocking or reducing estrogen production which leads to the reduction of the endometriotic tissue and thereby the help to give relief from symptoms. Some examples of hormonal treatments are the combined oral contraceptive. This can be in the form of oral tablets, which is commonly known as the pill, or in the form of a vaginal ring or a transdermal patch. They work by suppressing ovulation and by reducing estrogen production from the ovary. This causes the endometrial lining to become thinner and the periods become lighter and shorter. So the symptoms of endometriosis are reduced. They are suitable for women with mild symptoms of endometriosis. Advantages of the contraceptive pill. They serve a dual purpose. They, that is the uh, contraceptive as well as the help endometriotic pain. They may reduce or stop periods. Disadvantages of the contraceptive pill, there could be a side effect of nausea, weight gain, mood changes, and the risk of venous clots in the legs or in the lungs. Another type of hormone treatment are the progesterone-like medications, which are also called progestogens. These are available in different formulations, which include tablets, injections, implant, or Myrina. The Myrina coil is um, it's also called um, IUS, which is intrauterine system. It is a device that is placed in the uterus. It contains a substance called progestogen, which means like progesterone. The progesterone is gradually released into the uterus over five years. Other progestogens available are injectable form, which is medroxyprogesterone, which is Provera. We have um, didrogesterone, which is Dufaston tablets, norethisterone, which is Primolut, and the implant form is called Nexplanum. Depo-Provera 
is an injectable form of progestogen. It may take up to a year after stopping the treatment for periods to start up again. So if you're going to be planning for a pregnancy, you have to take this into consideration in that you have to give yourself plenty of time for your periods to be able to come back again. Advantages of progestogens. Pain is reduced, no periods or irregular periods. Disadvantages are side effects like acne, abdominal cramps, breast tenderness, irregular periods. Not all of the progestogens have contraceptive effects and they may not help the pain. Symptoms may recur when the treatment is stopped. The next group of hormonal treatments are called gonadotrophin releasing hormones analog. They, um, they, they work by causing a menopause like state. These are modified versions of naturally occurring hormones in women called gonadotropin releasing hormone. They are involved in the control of the menstrual cycle from the brain. They work by stopping the production of estrogen and thereby creates a temporary menopausal status for the body. This lack of estrogen causes the endometrial deposits to reduce or stop growing. Examples are goserelin, which is zoladex, and luprorelin, which is prostap. Women who are prescribed the above drugs may exhibit menopausal symptoms like hot flushes, and it is advised that they are prescribed hormone replacement therapy as adverb therapy. Advantages of GNRA analogs, no menstrual periods, gives effective pain relief, reduces or stops the growth of endometriotic tissue. The disadvantages may include hot flushes, mood changes, vaginal dryness, symptoms may start again when the treatment is stopped. There may be thinning of the bones, which we call osteopenia, if they are used for more than six months. They should not be used for more than six months, ideally, and they are expensive. Another set of hormonal treatments are called testosterone derivatives. They are synthetic. That is, they are artificially made forms of testosterone, which is a male hormone. They work by decreasing the production of estrogen and progesterone, and, and this in turn stops the growth of the endometrium. They are mostly used in the early 80s, but their use has greatly declined since GNRA agonists were available. Examples are Danazol and Gestrinon. Danazol is effective in treating endometriosis. However, it has many androgenic side effects. For example, it can cause increased ear growth, acne, it can also cause nausea and dizziness. The symptoms may recur once treatment stops. They're usually used as second line agents when other treatments have failed due to their side effects profile. So the next big group of treat options for treatment for endometriosis are surgical treatments. These often improve endometrial pain and they can be offered in addition to hormonal treatments. Um, laparoscopy, it is done to make a diagnosis of endometriosis, especially when ultrasound is normal, as it is in some cases of mild endometriosis. The areas of endometriosis may be removed the first time the laparoscopy is done. The removal may be by excision of the tissue or by ablation. Ablation means surgical removal of the tissues using diathermy or heat to destroy the tissues. You may be asked to go back for more surgery depending on the location of the endometriotic deposits and how extensive it is. Advantages of laparoscopy. It gives a definite diagnosis. It leads to long-term care in the majority of cases, up to 70%. Disadvantages of laparoscopy. It may not cure the pain. There are risks of surgery, e.g. infection, bleeding, etc., there may be a recurrence of endometriosis in about 30% of women. Laparotomy. A laparotomy is a procedure that involves the opening up of the abdomen to remove endometrial deposits from the ovaries. It is done for more severe cases of endometriosis. 
hysterectomy. This is a procedure that involves the removal of the uterus. It may also involve removal of fallopian tubes and cervix. This procedure may have to be done in a small group of women whose endometriosis symptoms are not relieved by medical or other less extensive surgical procedures. Advantages of hysterectomy. No need to use medication. No more menstruation. Long-term cure is achieved in over 90% of women. The uterus, which is believed to be the original source of the endometriotic deposits going to other areas of the body, is removed. Disadvantages of hysterectomy. Women become infertile. It may not cure the pain. Longer stay in hospital. It may lead to onset of premature menopause if the ovaries are removed as well as the uterus at the same time. The affected women may need hormone replacement therapy. The next type of surgery is bowel surgery. This may be needed when endometriotic deposits are located on the wall of the bowels, thereby having the potential to cause severe symptoms. The surgery involves the removal of the affected bowel segments. The specialist bowel surgeon will be involved as well. Treatments for fertility. Hormone treatment, e.g. contraceptive pill, are not advised for the treatment of endometriosis if you're trying for a pregnancy. Surgical treatment may be more appropriate here. You may need a referral to a fertility specialist who will assess you and offer a range of procedures, e.g. excision of endometriomas, which are endometriosis on the ovaries, and excision of endometriotic tissues elsewhere in the uterus fallopian tubes. Ablation of the ovarian endometriomas may be done. That is the destruction of the tissues by heat or by laser. Other treatment methods like IVF, in vitro fertilization may be used. This involves taking eggs from the ovary and adding them to the man's sperm in a laboratory for the purpose of fertilization. The fertilized egg is then placed into the woman's womb. Infertility. Additions. Where additions are an issue in the causation of infertility, adiciolysis may be done. Additions are fibrous bands that form between tissues and organs, often as a result of injury during surgery. They may be thought of as internal scar tissue that connects tissues not normally connected, and they are a risk of having surgery to treat endometriosis. They may cause pain by themselves. Alternative methods for treating endometriosis. All the methods described so far have the potential for one form of side effects or the other. As a result, some women have resorted to trying other forms of treatment for endometriosis, such as herbal products, acupuncture, etc. There is no evidence that they work due to the fact that they have not been scientifically proven to do so. Exercises. Some women have found that taking part in physical exercises improves their symptoms and their well-being. Psychological therapies, e.g. counseling, may help women to cope with the stresses of having to live with endometriosis. Food. There are certain foods that increase estrogen production, and this may be avoided to help reduce the symptoms of endometriosis. Examples are wheat and dairy products, processed food, chips, pastries, alcohol, caffeine, and red meat. On the other hand, foods that reduce estrogen production should be eaten more regularly. For example, foods high in fiber, such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains. Complementary therapy. Some women have found complementary therapies helpful, e.g. reflexology, acupuncture, vitamin B1, and magnesium supplements. Physical therapy for endometriosis. Heat therapy. A hot water bottle or having a hot bath may help to reduce pain. TENS machine. TENS stands for transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation. They are small machines that have electrodes on them that can be stuck on the skin. They send electrical impulses to the body. 
the electrical impulses may block the pain messages from the endometriotic deposits from reaching the brain, or they may produce endorphins, which are natural substances that fight pain. They should not be used by pregnant women or by people with heart conditions. Please consult your doctor before using it. Conclusion. There is no cure as yet for endometriosis, but are treatments that can help the pain and quality of life. So what the guidelines are recommending are, are, are that first-line treatments could be, um, the most endometriotic guidelines suggest progestin, such as dionegest or medroxy progesterone acetate as first-line treatment. Combined oral contraceptives can be used first line, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs can be used first line. Second line treatments are GnRH agonist and um, the Mirena coil. Other treatments, surgery. Surgery is considered when pharmacological treatments have not helped. Some guidelines recommend that multiple surgeries should be avoided due to addition formation and reduction of ovarian reserves. Complementary therapies like acupuncture can be considered when conservative medical and surgical methods are failed. It should be administered by a specialist. Not all guidelines recommend it. Tense, this has been found to be helpful in some people with chronic pelvic pain, but the evidence is not sufficient enough for most guidelines to recommend them. Dietary products and vitamins. There is some evidence of the effectiveness of certain foods and vitamins, e.g. B1, B6, and vitamin D, in helping the pain of endometriosis. But again, these methods have not been firmly established through rigorous scientific studies. So most guidelines are not making any active recommendations concerning them. What next? Having been made aware of the different options for the treatment of endometriosis and their pros and cons, Please go and have a discussion with your doctor so you can both discuss and choose the most appropriate treatment for you. Wishing you an endometriotic, pain-free life. Point to note, none of the treatments for endometriosis are guaranteed to work. It is to be noted by, that each person's experience is unique and what works for one person will not work for the other. It is best to consult with a family doctor or specialist to consider your options. Thank you. Bye.